presentation and proposal process. My name is Ron Venturella. I'm the procurement manager for Buncombe County. Um, so today we've got the non-mandatory um, information session. So we're allowing through May 29th for questions. And so those can be emailed to me and then we'll respond in an addendum um, on June 5th. And then, um, oh, and, and if you, if everyone will please put your information, your name, the company you're with and your email address into the chat, that way we'll, we'll have an attendance list. So if, if you'll take care of that, that would be great. And the reason I was saying that, that way we'll, that everybody in this meeting will be sh sure that everybody gets a copy of that addendum. Um, propo proposals are due at 2 p.m. on June 12th. Um, please do not wait till 1.59 to submit. <laughs> um, and that way the process is once I get them in, and it'll be by email, when I and it hits my inbox, I'll respond that I've received your proposal or, or not, or if, if, if I'm not able to open it, I'll let you know if it's not legible. Um, if 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 you get something back that it's too large, you're welcome to send a link for me to go out and get it and I'll I'll be sure I'll do that too and I'm able to get it and it, if not, I'll respond, but I'll respond back to you either way if if I've got it or not. Um, but again, that's June 12th at 2 p.m. Um, and there will be a committee that will review um, and then we hope to uh, to review the proposals and we hope to have that awarded on June 30th. Um, and that's all I, I wanted to add today and but just, I just allow for any questions about that proposal process. If anybody if anybody has any questions, I know there's some individuals from the city here and I think Jackie, you and I haven't worked together too much on that. So uh, um, so if anybody has a question, just fire away. Otherwise, I'll. I'll turn my mic off and, and let Jackie take over. OK, great, thank you. Um, all right, we'll just quickly run through high level RFP stuff. Hi, Jamie. Um, and then open it up for questions about the broader RFP quickly. Um, so big picture stuff, this is like a partnership between the, the county and the city. It'll result, result in two like very similar but separate contracts, one with the county, one with the city. Um, Ron already kind of walked us through the timeline a bit. Um, let's see where. Um, proposal contents, make sure y'all read through that. The only thing that's different this time is letter H, and that's only for for-profit vendors um, need to complete the linked ABI forms. That's new this time. Um, the contract term is worth noting, initially one year with uh, Options for two additional one year terms if mutually agreed upon. I encourage you to look through section 4.3 vendor experience on your own and let us know if you have any questions about that. That will be important part of your proposal. Um, and then obviously if the scope of work is kind of the meat of the RFP. Um, and we have uh, priority programs are the residential weatherization, um, ongoing educational programming for contractors, a pilot group purchasing campaign, um, admin support for the Blue Horizons Community Council, and pursuing and identifying additional funding and um, kind of data management and program impact analysis. Um, and then 
I, you know, on your own, encourage you to read terms and conditions. There's both for the county and the city listed on there. Um, so that's high level stuff. And then just wanted to open it up for questions. Vicki, since we have you, do you want to give an overview of the ABI policy and how it works? Just in case anybody who's not attending today needs to fill those out, listen to the recording. Absolutely. I'm going to do a quick little screen share. Again, this the ABI um, information, the ABI documents are only for profit organizations. So if you are bidding as a nonprofit or responding as a nonprofit, these do not apply. Please make sure to note that in your bid or proposal. All right, can you guys see this pretty good? Not too small. All right. So if you are a profit organization, the very first page will give you the instructions on what to fill out. If you are self-performing, you just check this beautiful little box right here stating that you are self-performing and that you will not be using any subcontractors. Once you click that box, you'll come down to the very bottom. You'll sign and date and fill out the rest of the information, whether or not you're a minority or women-owned business. And then that's it. Make sure to include that with your proposal. If you are subcontracting, you would then click option two. Again, after clicking option two, you fill out this information and sign and move on to the next form. The second form is your good faith minimum outreach, minimum good faith outreach efforts. And this basically is just a list of uh, options to complete in order to collect the five points, the five boxes, um, in order to demonstrate good faith efforts. Once you've completed all five of those, you would then go down and there's some at the bottom of the sheet, there are links and helpful, um, helpful sites to collect information on MWBEs within our communities. The next form would be your MWBE outreach document. On this form, anyone that is being reached out to would be documented on this form. And once that is complete, you would then go to the utilization form. On the utilization form, you would de demonstrate who you would be working with and making sure to provide the information of subcontractor name, um, the city, state, and phone number, the minority category, the description of the work, and the dollar and percentage of the work complete. Please note that those boxes are up here and would also need to be completed in order to be considered um, responsible and responsive. Once all those are done, then you just collect those three documents, uh, well, technically four documents, and attach that to your proposal and submit that in. And that will cover the ABI information. If you guys have any questions on ABI, uh, there is a link down here with the ABI phone number and the email. So feel free to reach out with any questions. Myself and Frank get those emails. So one of us will respond rather quickly. That's all I got. We have a couple of questions if now's a good time to chime in. Yeah, please, Sam. Okay, great. Uh, for those of you that I haven't met, I'm Sam Ruark. I'm the director for Greenbelt Alliance. And thanks so much for putting together this RFP and having this session. Um, the two questions I have, uh, the first is related to the budget. Um, we will, you know, through our RFP submittal, we'll put out a detailed budget of, you know, meeting the scope of work and just wondering, um, there's no budget information in the RFP about in terms of what's available. So what can you describe the process of like what we submit versus what you'll have available and then how we will, you know, work together to, if we are selected to figure out what the final contract would be in terms of the budget. Jeremiah, do you want to take that one? If I could 
figure out where the mouse was to click on mute, I, I would do that. Yeah. Um, so uh, the short version is I don't anticipate um, this process being that different than, than it has been in the past in terms of the budget. Uh, I, we haven't received it. Our, our budgets aren't complete yet. So until June 30th, we don't actually have a budget. Uh, you know how local governments work uh, until it's officially adopted. We don't have anything uh, in black and white that says this is our budget. I would say that we our requests, uh, and I think I can speak for the city on this, that our requests are similar to what they have been in the past. Uh, and so that process in terms of probably negotiating what services we can realistically pay for will happen once we receive a proposal and are able to sort of evaluate it and understand those costs a little better on our end. Uh, but I, I would say it's going to be pretty similar to what we've what we've done up to this point. Um, if there are additional resources available for additional services, uh, we'll we'll negotiate those and, and contract with those as a part of the broader scope of work once we have a, a proposal in hand. From your perspective, I would simply focus on what is the scope of work and what can we provide these services for? And then we'll we'll work with you on that once once we've gotten an official budget and we we know exactly what our resources are going to be for next year. Does that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that does. And would you like us in our our budget proposal to kind of lay out any matching funds that we might have available in order to kind of show the full scope? Let's say a program like ESN. You know, like currently seventy percent of it's covered by city and county, thirty percent comes from donors and foundations. And so I just wanted to want to get a sense from y'all if it'll be helpful to kind of plug that piece into the, um, the spreadsheet. I, I think that's fair. Um, and I think that that um, showing that you're leveraging other resources is never necessary is never a bad thing. Uh, and so I would just make sure that you're very clear in delineating what's what. Uh, but yeah, I think that would be a, a, a nice way to show that you're leveraging other alternative resources beyond just local government dollars. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. OK, great. Let's see. Uh, and then my second question is related to the measurement and verification pieces, um, specifically about the weatherization work we do. And you know, for the past three years, we've hired Vanda Musser to do the M&V work. Um, we're now in a conversation with this group called TRC and Duke Energy. TRC is a subcontractor for Duke. Um, for weatherization incentives, which we get some weatherization incentives now from, from those folks. And they already do measurement for verification for weatherization. So we're trying to, we're asking if, hey, can you guys just pull apart the piece that we do in your overall scope in order to be able to show us what kind of energy savings it's occurring <clears throat> and, you know, any other m and type um, measurements. And so that's the, that's the approach we would like to take um because it's been, it's been very difficult for us to receive duke energy data and then band of muster has been twelve thousand dollars a year so we're thinking about like saving staff and budget time to be able to like work with duke subcontractor on the m and i'm just curious any thoughts you'll have on that um as an approach for the m and stuff I would hesitate in this particular forum to tell to to tell you what your approach should be <laughs> right um I don't think that would be um, appropriate or fair in this process. Um, I can say that if you have a new uh, and what you feel like is a more effective approach at measurement and verification, we'd love to hear about it. And we'd love to hear about <laughs> it in that proposal. <laughs> um, right. You know, certainly we all, everybody, everybody here knows that Duke uh, data has, has its challenges. Uh, and if, there is a new or innovative or more effective way to get that data and to, you know, again, sort of prove the the value of the, the work. We would love to hear more about it. And I think that, that your proposal should be very, very clear about what what that plan would be. Um, that said, at, you know, if you're submitting it as an idea, but it's not something you've been able to lock in that partnership yet, that needs to be clear as well. Right, like we'd like to do this. They have not given us the green light, <laughs> um, so we're not. So that we're at least clear that like this is an idea, versus this is 
a defined partnership that we have already sort of entered into, right? I think that should be uh, clear in the proposal. But yeah, you know, again, understanding those challenges, we we know that if there are any newer interesting ideas on how to do that, that'd be that'd be great. We'd love to hear about them. All right, thanks. So I think that's all the questions I have. Do you have any questions? <laughs> okay. No. Okay. Yeah. There's there's one or two things that are kind of new in this RFP. I just want to highlight um, quickly. Um, under vendor experience, um, you know, we put a little bit more emphasis on experience with facilitating um, programming for disadvantaged communities. And then also um, demonstrating experience of your like identified personnel and their experience serving historically marginalized and underserved communities as well. Um, and also under that section 4.3 vendor experience, we made a note that um, respondents can collaborate with another agency or organization um, to respond to this RFP so you don't have to um, respond to the complete scope of work yourself uh, or as an in, as a, your own agency or organization. Um, so there's a little bit flexibility there. That all sounds good. Thanks. All right, any other questions or? What else we got? Yeah. It's all pretty straightforward on our end, so uh, we don't have any other questions. You all done a good job putting together, and of course, we've been working on this for a few years, so we know it. Got some writing to do. Yep, yep. <clears throat> we'll start typing away. Ron, I have a question for you. Is there something I need to do with this recording? Yeah, I, well, that, and that's what I was going to finish with is is you just hold on to it. And what I'll do for, for everybody is I'll, I'll get with Jackie and, and we'll get this recording, a link to this recording, and it will be in the addendum that goes out on, on the um, the 5th, June 5th. So we'll, we'll share this with everybody. But um, and then if anybody, you know, if anybody receives any questions or if you have any questions, please email those to me so I'll be able to collect those and we'll document their uh, receiving the questions and responding to all of them. Do we need to have all the participants put their name and email in the chat? I feel like maybe we're missing one. Yeah, if, if everybody would uh, please do that before we sign off here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, all. Bye. Bye.